Hey there, friends. Welcome to episode 12 of Learning Hand Tool Woodworking, where we are going to be final dimensioning this board. If you watched the previous videos, you've known we've gone through and practiced gauging our lines. So we're marking out the lines, um, being careful to reference against the correct surface. And if that doesn't sound funny to you, you need to go back and watch my last video where I inadvertently uh, demonstrated what happens when you gauge from the wrong side. So we mark those out. Then I'm coming back in with a, a pencil just to darken that up a little bit. All right, there's still a lot of planing left to do. So I'm not going to ask you to watch through the whole thing. We'll just see a couple of highlights of that. Uh, we'll get down to our line, then we'll pull out our set of winding sticks that we made, make sure this is nice and flat and no twist in it. So I got still a lot of planing to do, so meet me back here when I'm done. That's looking pretty good. So we're, we're going to leave that there. Let me move this pile of shaving down there on the ground. Um, there's quite a bit of defects in this piece of wood. I'm never going to be able to get it down um, to clear up all the defects. I'll, I'll fill these in with epoxy. Um, I'm not going to be able to use this on a project like I was hoping, but I'm going to keep this as a memento as the first board that I ever uh, dimensioned completely using hand tools. So um, I think that's pretty cool. Uh, this piece of wood uh, work holding that I have right there is it's called a doze foot. Um, again, first time I've ever used one of these. I've seen these demonstrated. Um, Put this up against the planing stock, put this in nice and tight here, hold it down with a clamp, and that helps lock this in place. So you probably saw in my previous video where this thing was flopping all around and flipping. The doe's foot really does a good job holding that in place. This is not in the teacher's handbook of Sloyd. Um, I'm not sure exactly where this comes from. I've seen it on the internet, works pretty good. But let me introduce to you another tool that is not in the teacher's hand with the sloy. Woo! And that is the bench hook. Uh, now, I was really surprised to find that the bench hook was not in the teacher's handbook of sloy. For some reason, I just always thought that it, it came from that era. But now that I think about it, you know, the, the sloy, because it was more of a continental. Uh, tradition. They do the turning saws, bow saws, things like that. They don't really do the western saws, and the bench hook uh, really helps with that. So all it is, three pieces of wood, one on top, one on the bottom, set square to the flat, uh, to the to the board, and this really helps you get a nice square cut. But before we do that, let's mark things out. Pull out my marking knife. Now, it's not a true marking knife. I don't have a, a single bevel marking knife, but this has got a nice steep bevel on it. Good sharp point. So we just mark up several lines there. All right. Again, keeping it against the same side so that we're always going square to the reference. Let's do this over here. All right. Now, in 
in order to get your cut, place this right up against there. I like to put mine in the vise, but it doesn't have to be in the vise. Any, um, you know, any square surface would work. Pull out your cross cut saw. Um, and, and this this may be the variation. These this is more of a an English and American tradition as opposed to the bow saws. So the, the bench hook may have come from that. Now, while I'm cutting here, some of you may notice that I'm standing a little bit taller. I have not shortened my bench. Um, the, this bench was made to a specific height. I, I cannot lower the height of the bench, but uh, one of the viewers by the name of Michael commented how I was standing too low and it looked like it just wasn't an efficient area. And he suggested getting pallets or something like that to raise myself up. And, you know, I'm thinking, Wow, ah, such a simple solution. Um, I've heard of that before, but I've never actually, I don't know why I didn't do it here, but thank you, Michael. So the other thing that Michael suggested is that I play around with the height, um, try different heights. Uh, and. Like I said, I'm not going to be able to lower the height of the bench um, because it, it has another purpose and it needs to be this particular size. But I am planning on making a bench more appropriate to this hand tool woodworking. So it's a good idea to just sit here and uh, try a couple of different heights. So I got some boards underneath there. But this bench hook, just put it, place it here, place the saw right up against the vertical edge. And you can start your cut. Okay. So you can see this this particular bit. Okay. So the bench is still a little too wobbly, um, but getting a new bench on there is going to help that. So. We should have nice and square. So yes, it is square in that direction. It is very close in that direction. Not perfect. All right. So that's where we would then bring in another tool, uh, which we're going to introduce later, and that's a shooting board, and that'll help clean that up. So again, that's square, and that's even... My eye tells me that it's less square, but the square tells me that it's more square. All right, how do you check to see if your square is square? You need to, since the square in my eyes don't match up, I've done this before, so I know the square is square. Mark a line like that, coming across on the other side, line that up perfectly. Do another line, and if those two lines actually line up perfectly, you know your square is square. So uh, in this case, it proves that the square is more accurate than the eye. All right, so quick little video. Finished up planing the board. Flatten, square, square, flatten the fourth side, and then square up the ends. And later, we're going to show you how to shoot and get, uh, get the, the ends cleaned up even a little bit more. All right, so fun little video. That's going to do it. Until next time, friends, take care. God bless.